Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we're back inside the fish room to check out my low-tech shallow reef tanks. There have been some things that aren't really going well with the aquariums and today we're going over them and see what we have to do about it to save these reef tanks. So without further ado, let's go and check out the first aquarium. The 20 gallon frag tank. I have added a few new corals in here over the last few weeks because I am saving up a nice collection of mushrooms and zoanthids for my new setup that we're building. I've been talking about it for a while now. The six gallon reef casa flat tank. It's a nano tank and a shallow tank, so double the fun. As you know, I love my shallow tanks and I also love my nano reef tanks. So it's a combination of both and I plan on turning it into a soft coral aquarium. I had a few different ideas for it, a macroalgae aquarium or SPS only tank or maybe just a mixed reef tank and I've heard your suggestions but in the end I think a soft coral aquarium with just some mushrooms and nice zoanthids will look really nice in this super shallow aquarium because honestly with this little space to work with some corals just won't work in here. They will grow way too big and yeah a system this small it's very hard to keep very stable so mushrooms and zoanthids are pretty hardy and they can tolerate some temperature swings and um, water parameter swings so I think mushrooms and zoanthids will be a great fit for this one. So if you want to follow along on this journey and maybe set up one yourself go to the link in the description and please use the affiliate link that I'm using for Reef Casa so I get a kickback from it when you order one and we can build one together. Alrighty back to the frag tank the 20 gallon frag tank it's set up with a ecotech xr15 g6 pro led light a nero 3 for flow an eheim temperature uh, heater to keep the water nice and warm for the corals i keep it at 24 degrees celsius we also have a dosing pump that doses calcium magnesium and alkalinity to it so the corals can grow and every now and then i'll probably i'll just add a few um drops of nitrate and phosphate in here because I have a lot of corals in here that require a lot of nutrients like these um, zoanthids I got them from a store in Belgium they look really nice and well some of them are a little bit closed up now but I can also see some bubble algae in there and yeah they don't really like bubble algae they get irritated by it and close up so before we add them to the new tank I have to clean them up, make sure they're all pest free and algae free before we add them to this new tank. Oh look, the air crate is just full with um, bubble algae and I also see some Aptasia. And then we have these Euphelias that are doing really well, but as you can see the corals next to them, the Cephastreas, aren't doing so well. I recently moved the torch from here back to there because it was basically fighting this Cephastrea and as you can see it took some damage. It didn't die completely so that's great but yeah it will probably heal up over the course of the next few weeks or so. But then I have another problem with this one because how am I going to get this out of here? It's growing all over the egg crate so I'll probably either have to cut the egg crate or well sacrifice some live coral but which I really don't want to do. Then we have of course the mushroom collection. I added a few new ones recently. This one right here, it's an interstellar bounce mushroom. A very bright and um, red one. This one I don't know what it's called. A superman mushroom. This one over here, it's a little bit, it looks orange or gold, I don't know. Then we have this one, it came from the 40 gallon over here. I have another one but it's not doing so well right there if the camera wants to focus that one I had two and it looked really nice so I want to put one inside the other tank of course then next to that we have some jawbreaker mushrooms and a OG bounce mushroom and then lastly for the mushrooms I picked up this uranium bounce mushroom from a local hobbyist it looks really nice doesn't it so if you have any other suggestions for mushrooms I should get or zoanthids I should get for this new build, let me know in the comment section. really want to get back into the zoanthid game again. I had a lot of them in the past, but 
they somehow just died off. Probably the lack of nutrients really killed them. They need a lot of nitrates and phosphates in order to grow. Then the other corals are doing quite well, except for that one over there. It's almost dead. Um, but if it would have been dead, it would have already been covered with um, algae, but seems to... Well, it's not really doing well. It's on the ACU. <laughs> It came from the 40 gallon mixed reef tank. It was a crafted Montipora, which is usually um, very bright red with uh, green in it. It looks really nice, but somehow it just started bleaching and now it looks like this. But I don't want to throw it away. Usually when I have a damaged coral, I will just put it in this frag tank and it will, it will heal. Also, something that really didn't help is about two weeks ago or so, I did a small water change because I noticed some algae on the uh, sand. I did the water change and I put back RO water in the tank instead of salt water. So a few hours later, I was like, why are these corals closed up? So I tested my water to see what was wrong. Usually don't test except for when I see something going on with the corals that doesn't look good. So I did that and the salinity was way too low. It was at like 30 parts per thousand and that's way too low. It should be 35. That's what I aim for. So as you can see, this coral over here, it has some damage. You can see the white spots on it, but it seems to be recovering slowly. So thank, thank God I didn't kill all these corals. Okay, I guess we've talked enough about the 20 gallon frag tank. Let's move over to the other side of the room and check out the 20 gallon soft coral focused aquarium. It has a very similar setup in terms of lighting, flow and heating, but this one doesn't have a dosing pump on it because these corals don't have skeletons. So they do not really need calcium, magnesium and alkalinity in order to grow. These mainly rely on nutrients such as nitrates and phosphates. Now, even though this aquarium has a lot of beginner corals in here that grow super fast and take over the entire tank, I think it still looks pretty good. I really like the look of it. It looks super natural in my opinion. It also has a ton of pests. As you can see here in the back of the tank, I'll point at it right over there. There's a ton of Aptasia and bubble algae, the shiny pearls here. And to be honest, I'm happy it's back because a few months ago, March from Fragbox TV from Canada visited my tanks and we filmed a video and I talked about how I was basically growing these pests and algae in here to create some content about how you can get rid of them using natural resources like shrimp, snails, nudie branches and uh, some chemicals. And I wanted to test out and see what works best to get rid of them. And then when we were filming on the spot, we were looking at the tank and everything was gone. All the aptasia were gone, the bubble algae was gone and I had a ton of cyanobacteria on the sand so I put in some, um, I think it was called cyano exit, but I'm not too sure. I put it in there, the cyano was gone, but so were the bubble algae and the aptasia. But luckily, it came back. And that's a weird thing to say as a reefer. So now I should probably hurry up and film this content because, man, it's getting out of control. So we have a ton of algae and aptasia to work with and we'll see what works best. Let me know what you think will work best on this tank and we'll check it out. I haven't cleaned the sand in over a month in this tank. Well, actually about two months, I think, was the last time I cleaned it. And it's still looking pretty white. Now, there is some algae forming here on the sand. It's probably some diatoms or cyano. Not too sure yet, but I expect this to happen. Outside, the temperatures are rising and it's getting warmer because, of course, spring is here. And... Every year it's the same thing. This one has been set up for three and a half years and every time it gets a little bit warmer outside it gets warmer in my room because it's in the attic of the house and I start having problems with cyano on the sand. It's normal. It's not really something I worry about. Once I get the AC going it will just go away again. Usually it's a trigger when well things get either warmer or colder it's temperature swings that really cause problems mainly the cyano is the biggest problem not really well a few years ago i had a tank crash um, the nano tank crashed like two times i guess because i didn't have ac and the temperature got too hot but now i can control the temperature in my room and so do the water inside the aquarium stay at 
normal temperatures. Doesn't get too warm, doesn't get too cold, it's just perfect, but these very minor swings in temperature really cause these problems. Anyway, we have a lot of macroalgae here as well. I put it in here, it died off, and then it came back super big, and it's growing super fast. As you can see, it starts here, it's going all the way around the aquarium, and sometimes it ends up in the uh, Nero 3 power head, and it just gets shredded and goes somewhere else in the tank. So, I don't care, this tank is, well, the goal of this tank is basically just to let these crazy corals take over wherever they like. As you can see, these soft corals are growing there, 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 everywhere. Same with these, these green star polyps. It's even growing on the sand. And I just let nature do its thing inside of here. It's a mess, but the clownfish love it. And to be honest, I like it as well. Speaking about the clownfish, they're super old. We should give them a treat. I have some food here for them. And there we go. Look at them. They really love this food. I mainly feed, uh, feed Vitalis. It's sold in the United States and in Europe. So pretty sure you can get it at your local fish store. As you can see, the fish seem to love it. And yes, I do overfeed this tank a little bit because these corals and macroalgae really need a lot of waste and nutrient buildup to thrive and grow. So it's not something I worry about. Alrighty, enough about this tank. Now we move on to the 40 gallon. And to be honest, it's kind of burning me out at the moment. I'm running into a ton of problems that maybe you haven't thought about before. A lot of people thought that this setup would fail because there is no filtration or skimmers on there, but that doesn't seem to be the culprit this time. Now, what do you notice when we take a look at this reef? Do you notice anything? Let me explain. This tank has been set up for three and a half years. Similar setup as all my other tanks, just lighting, flow, dosing pump and heating, and that's it. No sums, filtration or skimmers. And that's something that really people thought would be the end of the aquarium because you won't be able to keep it without filtration. Well, that is not the problem. The problem here is that when I started this tank, I was pretty new to the hobby and I just added any coral in here that I really liked. And you should do that, always, but you should think about the placement of these corals because when I started this aquarium, I really didn't do that. And as you can see here, some corals are starting to take over. And normally that wouldn't be such an issue, but in this tank, it is actually killing coral. You can see right underneath here, there is some green and it's a blastomusa. Here we also had some uh, soft coral, the same as over there, and it's almost gone. Basically, this coral over here and the favia started suffocating it and basically fighting and killing it to get more space to grow. Same thing happened with the Montipora here. There's a little bit left, but the rest is all killed. There was a big um, soft coral over here. Again, small piece left, the rest is gone. That really became a problem and I had to act fast and just rip it out, completely clean this side and luckily the tank didn't crash. But I'm noticing this all over the reef. The favia here has tentacles that come out at night to hunt for food, but it also damaged this part. And over here it got damaged, so this Montipora is dying off. The acro is not doing well. But this has been going on for months. This acro is still nicely colored, it's green, but it's not growing. This tank is probably just not stable enough for acroporas, but it is stable enough for most of the uh, LPS and soft corals. This is probably the only rock inside the aquarium that I really like, except for the Montipora over here. I don't really like it, it has some damage on here. I'm not sure what caused it, but it goes through these phases every now and then, and then it just starts to basically have these white spots and then it heals and it does really well for some time and the cycle just repeats but that's something that's pretty normal inside a reef tank. I really love these Pelitoas and uh, Zoanthids on here and this Duncan coral that I've had for many years now. It was probably one of my first corals. I believe I first introduced it in the uh, 15 gallon nano tank I had over here. 
like two or three years ago. I really like these Pectinias, they are doing really well. I recently lost my uh, clam, one of the clams. I'm not sure what happened, just one day it started to recede and close up and that's the end of it. Really don't know what's happened. This one looks really nice, it's still looking pretty healthy. If I move my hand, it still reacts, which is a good sign. The Christmas trees are in there, but there are less. So I've had them for like four years now almost and now some died, but other things came back. As you can see, there's a coral growing here. These small polyps on the side, just a nice rock still. Now these mushrooms, they are nice in a soft coral aquarium, not in this tank, because it is killing everything that's growing near it. The uh, bottom part of this Hydnopora was damaged and just started dying off. The acro over here has some damage on it because the mushroom got too close. And right underneath there, it's also damaging the Favia because it got too close. And then, of course, we have these Pelitoas that are growing everywhere. This big leather coral that's too big for the tank, so it can't extend its tentacles. It's really, this tank, man, I really don't like it anymore. So I'm really not sure what I should do. Should I just start removing the Pelitoas and the mushrooms and other corals I don't like and just add some new things to it? Or should I just completely tear it down Take the corals I still want to keep, put them in the frag tank for the time being and start building a new reef. That's really the only two options I can think of because, man, it's just so sad. I really not happy with it. Like yesterday, this turbinaria, it's been for, with me for so long. It was too close to the lobophilia and they started killing each other. Well, mainly that one started killing the turbinaria. As you can see, it's rotting. It killed a Montipora that was close to it over there. These mushrooms are irritating the chalice over here and over there. And this mushroom is basically starting to damage this Montipora as well. It's just a big pain in the ass. Now, there are a few corals that I really want to keep in here, which are the uh, Space Invader chalice, these Fungias. Lobophilia, these Bugatti chalices, of course the nice royal grama fish and the chromis and the clownfish over there. I also love the um, hammer coral, the Ophelia, Duncans, of course, Pectinias. And of course I also have these frags from a sieve at home from France that I really like and want to put somewhere on the reef, but there's just no room for it and everything starts to fight for space and Coral warfare is becoming a big problem in this thing. And I know I'm just rambling on about it. And to be honest, I'm just so frustrated with this thing at the moment. And I really don't know what to do. I've Well, actually, I've known this for a few months now. I started getting trouble, especially here. I took out the turbinaria. It's over there now. I took out the chalice. I put it in there. Now it's back in here. And just things start getting worse and worse and worse. And now things are just getting even more worse, if that's even possible, because, well, everywhere you can see damaged corals and just doesn't look good. It's not what I want. I want a colorful reef, but looks like the green corals and the basically just brownish, boring corals are starting to prevail and all the nice, beautiful colored ones are dying. They are losing the battles because they're just growing too slow or they don't have the defense mechanisms like the favias or the mushrooms or the lobophilia. I will include a clip in here when I um, basically caught them fighting. Oh, look, there it goes, the uh, dosing pump. And you could really see the um, insides of the coral that were attached to that part over there. And it just, man, it makes me sad. This tank has been with me since the start, basically. Three and a half years going on to about four years now. And now I really have to make a decision and make some drastic changes. So let me know what you think I should do. I really, really don't really want to take it all down and rebuild it. Because I did that with my nano reef. And 
I never got it back to where I really wanted it to be. But yeah, I think I'm running out of options. Let me know what you think, what you suggest. Should I just start taking out some of these species, give all these corals some room and some space to breathe basically underwater and see where it takes me? Or should I just take it all down now, frag the corals I want to keep and just start over again? Now it would be pretty interesting to make a new series of course, but I also have an emotional connection with this aquarium because it has been with me since the beginning of my reef keeping journey. It's been with me since the start of my YouTube channel where when I got like 10,000 subscribers or something. Now we have over 100,000 subscribers and you guys have seen this thing grow, go through all the problems it has faced during the past and I had shared everything with you so far, including this because this is something that every reefer should admit. You sometimes make mistakes or when you're a beginner, you put in corals that you don't really should put in there, but you did because you liked them. And now a few years later, you start facing the consequences of it. So we all learn something. I really don't know what to do with it. I'm kind of fed up with this thing at the moment. So I hope you can give me some good suggestions. This wasn't really a nice update, but it's part of reef keeping. Good things, bad things, we share everything. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and follow along on my journey with my reef tanks. So let me know some challenges that you face with your aquariums. I really want to know and maybe we can learn from it. So for now, I still hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.